Okay, this is lesson 1.3. Um, it's the second day of this lesson. We're just isolating the topic of midpoints. Um, oftentimes we have to find the middle of something. Uh, in this case, there'll be segments. And in construction or architecture or interior design, you want to get things centered. That would be a reason that we need to know how to find the midpoint. Um, let's just take a simple example here. Example one, the coordinate on the number line of J and K coordinates here are negative 3 and 5. So I've got a point basically at negative 3. I've got a point at 5. This is J. This is K. There's my segment. Find the coordinate of the midpoint. Now a lot of you can look at that. You can eye it. You can count back from each end until they cross over. But that's going to work nicely for this kind of a number. But we're going to work into some bigger numbers and some more complicated problems. So maybe a more algebraic way of finding it. Um, Midpoint is basically code for average. We want to find that average, the middle of this. So we're going to take negative 3 and 5 and add them together and divide it by 2. Because if you want to find the average, you add up all the numbers that you have and you divide by the amount of numbers you have in the list. So we have 2 here. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is our midpoint. Okay? Which means our segments are congruent. Notice those congruency markings. Um, and if you want to double check from 1 to 5, it's 4 units. From negative 3 to 1, it's also 4 units. Also showing that those are congruent. All right, example 2. The coordinates of the number line J and K are negative 12 and 16, respectively. Find the coordinate of the midpoint of J and K. Well, you can draw out a number line if you want, but basically using this method right here, we're going to find the average of these two points, so we're going to add them together, divide by 2. That gives me 4 over 2. So my midpoint on the number line would be at 2. Okay, but our problems aren't going to be like this today. So what if you have to find the midpoint of negative 9, 3 and 5, 7? Okay, so I've drawn a line here. You have negative 9, 3, and we have 5, 7 over here. How are we going to find the middle there? Yeah, you can eye it, you can get out your rulers, but we want to have something very, very accurate, and we need to know what that's going to be, and it's going to be a good old formula. This is the midpoint formula. Now check this out. This is going to be your new x value. You're going to add up the x values and divide by 2, and this will be the average of your y values. You're going to add the, up the y values and divide by 2. So compared to the distance formula, this seems Okay, what if you have to find the midpoint? This is the same question right here. Now let's actually go ahead and find it. So I'm going to take my x values, negative 9 plus 5, and divide by 2. Uh oh. Hold on just a second, it's going to come. It will. Oh dear. Let me try this. Oh, it's going to, I'm going to really lock it up here. All right, and then you're going to take your y values, which are 3 and 7, and divide by 2 as well. And negative 9 plus 5 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Let's see what I can do. There we go. So I divide by 2. So I've got 4 over 2, which is going to give me 2. Let me put a comma here to kind of show this is the x values right here. And then I'm going to take my y values, which are 3 and 7, add those together, divide by 2. So I've got 10 over 2, which is 5. So I've got the coordinate 2, 5. Let's kind of double check. Um, I made a mistake, didn't I? Negative 4. Could you tell from the long pause? Oh, goodness. I was like, that is not going to graph in the right spot. And that's how you can check that. Negative 2 and 5 would put me right here. Those are my endpoints. Here's my midpoint. Okay, I would say that's a pretty, pretty good judge there. Now, here's another sneaky little trick. Remember distance formula? We can make a triangle out of it. This is kind of a backup plan, or you could use this if you absolutely had to, but um, this is like how many units here? We got negative, we've got nine units and five. So that's 14 total. So I want to go seven units from an endpoint or find the average, find that midpoint, come straight down. 
Take this length, which is four units, the middle of that would be two, come straight over. And it ends up at the, the middle. So you could draw it out if you wanted to and find your midpoints that way. I prefer that we kind of go with the formulas, but if you need that to tra transition, go ahead. Example four, we're going to do it again. Find the coordinates of the midpoint of segment XY. If X is at negative 2, 3, negative 2, 3, and Y is at negative 8, negative 9. Okay, and then we make our line. Check this out, make a nice little line from here to here. Okay, so basically add your X values divide by 2, add your y values, divide by 2. This is negative 10 over 2, this is negative 6 over 2. So this is like my coordinate there, I have negative 5, negative 3. Let's double check, negative 5, negative 3. Looks pretty promising, if you want to make your triangle, go ahead and do that. Find the coordinates of M, the midpoint of segment GH, for G, which is at 8, negative 6, and H, which is at negative 14, 12. I'm going to have you do this one, and we can talk about this one in class. So, example 5, write down those numbers, work it out on your own, and we'll do a kind of a quick check, or something like it in class. All right, now I'm going to turn the tables on you. Find the other end point, if the midpoint is 4, 3, and the end point is 5, 8. So I've got a midpoint at 4, 3. So now this is the middle. And the end point is at 5, 8. Did we count that right? Let me do a quick check. 4 and then 8. Okay, so basically if I've only got half of my, I'm going to write that out, end point. Okay, so somewhere down here is my other end point. I know a lot of you could just graph this. You're like, I'm going to go over one, up five, and go down five, back one. That's one way to do it if you've got the graph paper. Okay, another way to do it is kind of, kind of just to write it out. Okay, so I'm going to add my x values, divide by two to get the number I need. Add my y values, divide by two to get the number I need, which is the midpoint. So somewhere down here, I'm looking at my other end point. This is, this is tough. This is really tough for kids, so watch for this. All right, I'm going to take my x values for, oops, I better make that a color for you all can see. So you got 4 plus the other endpoint x value. I don't know, but I know if I divide it by 2, I'm going to get the midpoint x value. Whoops, I, you guys, I, I made a mistake. I do that a lot. Oh. Okay, the end point is at 5, 8. So I have to take 5 plus the other x value, divide by 2, and it gives me the midpoint. And the midpoint is 4. Okay, I take my other end point y value. I'm going to add the other end point y value, which I don't know, divided by 2, and I'm going to get the midpoint y value, which is 3. Okay, let me quick review that. This is like x1, this is like your x2. I know that x1 is 5, but I don't know the other x value. I don't know this one down here. That's why there's an x going in its place. Divided by 2, but I know that I'm going to end up with 4, 3. Okay, I know I need the 4 in the end. End point up here is got the y value of 8 plus the other y value down here, which I don't know. Add them together, divide by 2, I need to get a 3. So that's why adding them together, divided by 2, I should get a 3. Now how do you solve this? Well, first I'm going to get rid of divide by 2. I undo that by multiplying by 2. Oops, these 2's cancel out. Boy, this is lovely, isn't it? You're like going to go crazy with me. Here we go. Divide by 2, so now I have 5 plus x is equal to 8. So x is equal to 3. I do the same thing down here. I'm going to take it times 2. These cancel. So I have 8 plus y is equal to 6. So then y has to be equal to negative 2. Okay? So it looks to me like the other endpoint should be at 
3, negative 2. All right? 3, negative 2. Okay? And I'm going to put end point here. End point. Now let's check. If I go up 5 over 1, up 5 over 1, this looks like it should be my segment. All right? A lot of you right now are thinking, boy, the graphing would be a lot faster. But I, if you practice this enough, with your homework and stuff, I think you'll start to feel a lot more comfortable with this. You just have to be aware, every time I give a problem read, am I giving you the end points or am I giving you a midpoint and an end point? Let's do another one, all right? So we feel a little more comfortable with this, especially with all the little glitches. We have, find the coordinates of D if E is the midpoint. So I'm going to draw the midpoint right now. Negative 6 and then positive 4. And that's your midpoint. And it's point E. And F is the end point and has a coordinate of negative 5, doo -doo 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 -doo, negative 3. Okay, and that's point F, and this is an end point. Okay, so that means probably if I were to go along here, somewhere up in this territory is going to be my other end point. So now I'm going to take my midpoint value. I've got to write this down because otherwise I get. Okay, and my end point is f has a coordinates of negative 5, negative 3. So I'm going to take negative 5 plus my other endpoint. So negative 5 plus x divided by 2 will give me the midpoint value, which is negative 6. All right? And then I do it again for my y values. My y value is negative 3 plus the other y endpoint, which I don't know. But if I divide by 2, I'll get the midpoint y value. All right, take this times 2. These cancel, so now I have negative 5 plus x is equal to negative 12. Add 5 to both sides, I get negative 7. Same thing over here, multiply by 2, so I get negative 3 plus y is equal to 8. y is equal to 8 plus 3 is 11. All right, let's kind of take a look at this. If I have a point at negative 7, and I go up 11, 3, 6, 9, and 11, that puts me right here. And does that look like that could be a reasonable midpoint? I think we're going to find out that it does. Yeah, that seems to work very nicely. Okay, once again, End point plus end point divided by 2 gives you the midpoint. We don't have the other end point. That's why I've got this x, and that's why I've got this y as well. All right, this is example 8, and find the coordinates of r if n is the midpoint. It's at 8, negative 3, and the segment rs has an end point of negative 1, 5. Now, I want you to try this, okay? You're like, oh, I can't do it. I want you to try it. Okay, and then we can kind of look at this in class and see where we are. All right, see how much you can do by yourself, and that way you'll get a good chance to see what kind of questions you have for me. All right, and that concludes this lesson. This is the second day of 1.3. We're just working on midpoint.